Good evening. 300,000 women die every year around the process of birth. 30 billion people need basic surgical care, but they don't get it. So I thought somebody has to do something about it. And in the last five years, through our partners, clients, about 25,000 people have been treated and 5,000 people received surgery. You can see how it's done in containers, shipping containers. I thought, why not take a shipping container and turn it into a hospital? And I'd like to give you a little bit of background about myself, uh, an overview. As a kid, I liked to help people. I thought it would be good to share. Um, I did my study. Uh, I thought maybe I can become a doctor or engineer and maybe help people in uh, developing countries. But I wasn't very good in... Uh, I was... Okay, I, I got uh, the study, I, but I looked more out of the window instead of my books at home. I like to play the guitar, I like to do all kind of other stuff. So, finally I, I started to study uh, as a nurse in a hospital because I could make money and I was a little bit tired of trying to study. And after, let's say, about six years working in the hospital, beside the bed, I got a burnout. Uh, not only because of the work that didn't fit, but also personal circumstances. And this, 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 this made a change, so I, after a year I thought I'd pick up uh, programming. Uh, so I started to program on the computer. Uh, became system manager, started my own company, ICT company, also in the developing world. And um, let's say 2008, I make a big jump now, my daughter, she went to Sierra Leone and she was working as a volunteer in a hospital uh, for women. And when she came back, it was the same time I was also in Africa, but when we got home, uh, I thought, well, I should do something again in the medical field. This is where my heart was when I was, was young, what I wanted to do. At the same time, I was waiting for six days in Ghana. I was placing an ICT container next to a hospital that you see in the corner. And this was a hospital of $15 million. So I thought, uh, this is over the top, in the middle of nowhere. And by the way, it was closed two, two months after it was completed, because there was no staff, there was no plan behind it. So I thought, why not build 50 to 100 hospitals for this price, but more robust, more simple. So I came home, talked to my wife about it, and we, we thought about it, we prayed about it, and we said, okay, let's do it. So I put in the money of the ICT company, the money of the pension, and started to build in the, in the garden of my neighbor on the, on the other side of the street. And uh, he was pensioned, and he was a carpenter, and he liked to help. So we took the, the grinder, and we started to make holes in the container to build an operation theater. And after a year, I, uh, I was already outside, on, on, uh, working outside in the open air on another place. Uh, it was finished, the hospital was finished. Uh, the money was also finished. Uh, and then you, okay, you say, what now? Uh, MSF, Doctors Without Borders, had already, borders had already been by and, and looked at it. And then the earthquake in Haiti happened. Maybe you remember 2010. And um, they called, is the hospital still there? And I said, yes, it's still there. Okay, our hospital is collapsed. Can we, can we buy it? Yeah, sure, you can buy it. And this is actually how it started. Uh, we, it was brought there in a, few, in a few days and two weeks by boat. I flew over with somebody else and we built it up in three days. And about 2,000 surgeries were done in about one year. People that had broken legs, arms of, of the, the, the earthquake. After that, you know, the, it still was a challenge because there were dips. Uh, because if you work for disasters, uh, you still have to wait for a disaster. You cannot plan it. But luckily, you cannot plan it. Otherwise, you call it attack. So uh, after that, in Darfur, in Sudan, we placed an X-ray container. Uh, uh, the typhoon in the Philippines, you remember, we placed a unit there for uh, delivery. 
Uh, in homes, we, we brought a trailer like that. There are now about three. In a few weeks, we will bring two more to Aleppo, to close to Idlib. Um, you see that it's close to a building that is damaged by the guns, by the, the shots. So we bring like a trailer fully filled with beds, medicine, equipment, so that they can start a hospital out of a box, kind of. Uh, like, uh, well, I cannot say, say the brand maybe, but you, you think of a warehouse and you, you take your tools and you build a hospital. So this is what we also will do in a few weeks to other parts. And after the, uh, the, the Ebola crisis, uh, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs called, what can you do? So in one and a half weeks, we built three laboratories for Ebola testing, two treatment centers. And just a few weeks ago, we got a call from MSF, Doctors Without Borders, Belgium. What can you do for a ship in the Mid Mediterranean? to pick up uh, refugees. So we built a hospital over there, and the first 500 refugees were picked up just a few weeks ago. So this is just a little background of, of the last five years. It's actually very exciting and challenging how it's going. Uh, but we, we talk here about the economy. And I was inspired by, by four men, maybe more, women also, but I took just the four. Uh, John the Baptist, Ricardo Assembler, Jesus Christ, and Nelson Mandela. First John, um, I, I remember when I was young, my mother used to read me uh, the Bible, the children's Bible, and he said, if you have two coats and somebody has none, give one away. I thought to myself, that makes sense. So, yeah, I, I think I have to do that. So this, this kept in my mind. And I think we live in a society where we have more than two coats. Maybe I have four or five, I don't know. But still we have so much to share. Even if we, and if we share, it doesn't make a big difference for us, but it probably will make, it surely will make a big difference for other people. And Ricardo, uh, he's an entrepreneur that puts a lot of trust in his employees. He said, you can decide your own salary, your work times, your vacation, uh, your production, whatever you do. If you reach your target, I don't care how you do it. And it works very well. He's very successful. Jesus Christ, um, he told me how to take care of people that are broken, that are hurt, that are needed. And um, Nelson Mandela, you know him. I was in Robben Island a few years ago. And... One of the prisoners told me there, the ex-prisoners, that while they were in prison, Nelson Mandela, the others, as the leaders, they decided that they would not take revenge when, when they would get out of the prison. No bloodshed. So he told me that you should love your enemies and go over borders, reconciliation. So how do, does this, this translate to business? Well, if you look to John, it means that I'm responsible as an entrepreneur, to share and to invest in people and to take risks. Because if I t give something away, I don't know uh, uh, what will happen with it. If I get something in return, I don't know. I have to take this risk. If I look to uh, Ricardo, uh, it means that my employees, we have, I have four employees now, uh, I have to trust them. And they come when they want to come. They take holiday when they want to take holiday. I don't know how much days they take. And we're now exper experimenting with the salaries. So they kind of make their salaries. It's still a little bit scary for me as a boss, I must say. <laughs> but it's going very well because they see the interest of the company and not their own personal interest alone. And it really works. But I'm learning. I'm learning. So, so uh, also we do the same with our suppliers. We have about maybe 50 suppliers of all different goods. And most of them, we don't even ask a quotation. Because once we know them, and they know us, we believe that uh, they will treat us fairly. And they, since they know that, they treat us fairly. About Jesus Christ. Well, he taught me to, to look and find the hurt, the sick, the refugees, the prisoners, people maybe in your street, but also... For me, it's also a lot over the border. 
and also to find God. For my personal life, that meant, that meant a lot. It means a lot. He also taught me the gut factor. You have to follow your heart, follow your feelings, but also have guts, you know, take risk. And I have to say the gut factor is very important as well, because without it, I believe I wouldn't have succeeded. So together, uh, Nelson Mandela told me that you have to work together. And without uh, looking to religion, ethnic background, uh, we work in areas where there's conflict in the Middle East. You have to work with different parties, but we stay uh, independent. We don't choose sides, but we take care of the people, of the hurt people. Not always easy, because they want to force you to take sides. But we say, no, we are here for the people, and anybody that needs help, we want to help. So as a result of this philosophy, or how do you call it, I don't know, uh, we have about 10 companies in a, in a club we call Workforce for Life, and they all contribute to our product. One, they invest equipment, the other invests medicine, uh, the electrician, they put in the, 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 the wires, and so everybody does something, and together with these 10 companies, we build a stock, we have about 20 containers on stock, two trailers like this, and we can build about, we can deliver about three hospitals, uh, two trailers in one week, because everybody has stock. And this way we are able to provide very quickly. And this is, uh, I think, a very unique selling point. But it only happens because we trust each other and we share and we invest together. And because of this, we have customers like the government, the Dutch government, the Ebola crisis was this. Uh, we have NGOs, different NGOs we work with, also in consortia. Uh, we work with the UN, United Nations, and we are in a consortium of the EU. We are funded with different partners to build new solutions. And this all comes because you have to start small and take risk. I, I'm coming to my conclusion now. Uh, this fits me. I'm happy if I, I'm not happy for these people. I, I'm one, yeah, I'm one and one happy because they are saved from their boats on the Med Mediterranean. But it also makes me very uh, happy because I see, okay, what we built on this ship really works. Um, and I think giving is universal. It, it's, uh, you might think, okay, you, you work on this way, but if you work on your own uh, terrain, very small, and you give, I think it will, uh, you will receive in return and things start to happen. Um, of course, I'm also a businessman, I'm also an entrepreneur, and we go for profit. That, this might sound, sound uh, a bit strange, but profit is very important. We have a turnover now of, of about, in the last five years, we build it up this year, about two, two million, probably. And profit is very important, because I say profit is number one, but also people are number one. Helping people is number one. And one goes hand in hand, because we can do this, because we have a kind of uh, solid foundation where we can do this, do this together with our partners. And I already told you I failed, uh, almost failed several times. Uh, you have to pick up uh, when you think it's not going to, going to work anymore, you have to pick up the thread. Um, and so I also want to encourage you not to to stop. If you think something is important and you want to share, you want to do something, uh, if something fails, it's only, it only means that you took a risk. And without taking risks, things don't grow, things don't happen. Uh, also, the people around you are very important, like Nelson Mandela told, you have to do it together. So gather people around you that will help you. So what does it mean for you? Maybe you're a mother, a businessman, a worker, a student, whatever. But you have your own circle of influence when you, where you can start doing the things you really believe in and to share. Share, trust, care, dare, and do it together. Take the risk, fail, rise up, find people around you that inspire you, that help you. Take small steps and jump. Thank you very much.